Hello everybody, welcome to Rimac Automobili. I've started this journey 10 years ago, believing that electric powertrains can make for better sports cars. Our mission is to make electric cars fun, exciting and fast. Today, we are over 1,000 people and we are here at one of our locations just outside of Zagreb in Croatia. And this is what we have been working on day and night for the last four years to create the best electric hypercar. At the beginning of the project, we set ourselves really high targets. Global homologation, fastest acceleration of any car, most powerful production car ever. Lots of features and functionalities like the driver coach, autonomous driving features, ergonomy and comfort in the car, making it usable not just to sit in the garage but actually that people can enjoy it. And anybody who has ever done a development project know how it starts. You start big with lots of ambition and as you get uh, running out of time and money, you drop features and make your job easier. I'm very proud that we nailed pretty much everything and even overachieved on some of our targets. One of the things that makes this car very special is that everything has been developed and designed specifically for this car. There is no carryover from our previous car or any other cars. Everything is custom developed for this car by our team here. We built three generations of prototypes, experimental prototypes, validation prototypes, and pre-series cars. These are two of many validation prototypes, most of which are crashed for homologation certification purposes. We are really proud of the result and think we have something very special, so we want to share it with you. We were looking long and hard for the right name for our car. We wanted something meaningful, something that reflects our creation roots and the character of the car. There's a summer storm off the Mediterranean coast that comes unexpectedly and it's a combination of lightning, strong winds and rain. It's a force of nature. It's electrified, powerful and unique in so many ways, just like the car that we are making. So the C2 becomes the Nevera. Everybody at Rimac hopes that the Nevera will live up to its name. Now, let's go to the production line and check out the evolution from the C2 to the Nevera. We are now at our prototype assembly line, where we are building the last pre-series cars before we start customer car production. The story of production of the prototypes is kind of a story of our company as well because as we are building the product, we are also building the company, the team, the processes and everything together. The first three experimental prototypes were built at our headquarters in Sveta Nedlja uh, on like just a workshop. Then we have this prototype assembly line where we are producing all the pre-series and, and validation prototypes that we have built over the last one and a half years. And now we are building another facility as an interim solution between our campus and this line because we can't wait for the campus anymore and we run out of space here to produce the first customer cars. So we'll be moving this line and expand it over the next few months before we start the customer cars. In the few months that are ahead of us, we will start the production of the customer cars and then ramp up to one car per week. This is a nice view of the important bits and pieces of the technology of the Nevera. Uh, everything is based upon the structure, which is an impressive thing on its own. It's designed by Daniele Giacchi and his team, our chief engineer, and it's a very impressive part, being the biggest carbon fiber structure uh, of any car. From the front crash structure to the rear crash structure, it's one piece. The front and rear suspension being on the same part, the battery structure being integrated, having 70,000 newton meters per degree of stiffness, making it the stiffest structure of any car ever made. We have the front powertrain, of course, with two electric motors, rear powertrain with, again, two electric motors, four electric motors, the front powertrain and rear powertrain being completely separate and completely different, different architecture to optimize it for the front and the rear. And you can see just the spine of the car uh, with the a wiring harness going across the whole car with so many components and so many systems that have to work together 
to make the car as it is with lots of cooling systems in the front, cooling in the rear, um, and everything developed bespokely for the Nevera. Here we can see one of the final pre-series cars, and all of them have a planned life. They will be used for road and track testing, and most of them, unfortunately, ending up in the end in crash testing for the homologation, certification, and safety testing. This car and all of the other pre-series cars will be finished in the next month, and then we start moving the production line and start customer car production. Here we have Adriano Mudri, our head of design with us. Hey, Mate. Adriano, who is way too many years already with me. What is it now, 12 years? Yes. Okay. So we've done everything together from the first day until today. And Adriano will help us uh, tell the story of how we came from the first concept car to the Nevera today. Yes, let's go ahead. Let's go. So here it is, the Nevera, finally. For me, it's exactly what I wanted. When I'm looking at it now, it's what I was looking forward so many years. But uh, could you tell us a little bit how you came up with the design concept? Well, the initial idea with the brand and for, the, for our hypercars, electric hypercars, uh, was born more than 10 years ago. So we wanted something that is elegant, compact and timeless. Because this car also has much more power, uh, we wanted it to be more vigorous, more modern of course, and more athletic. So here we have lots of air intakes in the front, air intakes in the side, and maybe something that's important to explain is that it's a separate powertrain system in the front with a separate cooling system and separate powertrain system in the rear with its own cooling system in the rear. So you had to get a lot of air around the car to cool the rear powertrain, right? Yeah, the most crucial thing was to set up the front correctly and to have everything dictated by the battery because to cool down the battery is the hardest thing. Uh, the powertrain itself is very efficient, yeah, so it doesn't generate too much uh, heat but the battery is like the biggest radiator we had to integrate. Which is this one in the middle and getting the air out here. Exactly, so the battery has the best airflow and has the, has the cleanest air and everything is of course then also regulated by this flap that moves up and down and also depending on, on how much you push the throttle and how much you extract uh, electricity from, from the battery uh, and how much it actually then heats up is then regulated by this, so uh, you don't have always the best airflow, but also sometimes the most efficient airflow if you want to extend the range. Then on the sides here you have radiators for the motor and inverter in the front, but they are directly in the airflow, but don't generate that much power because the, let's say, majority of the power comes from the rear powertrain. So how was it to channel the air through the side of the car? So. Part of the air that feeds the rear uh, radiators goes already through here, but is extracted then behind the rear wheel. And then this, this air here is mixed again then with the clean air that comes from the side and then is fed into this intake. This intake, as you can see, is very prominent yeah, and is dictated by these two feature lines that are double curved and point towards uh, the cravat. And our cravat is uh, a very uh, prominent and very proud feature of, of our heritage and, and our home country. The cravat has, uh, well, the cravat is a, as some would say, a Croatian invention. Uh, and it originates in the 17th century when there were still wars in Europe and uh, Napoleon would uh, attack here and there. And then he would uh, meet Croatian uh, soldiers and the Croatian soldiers had this uh, special scarf that they would not uh, in a Kvat way, yeah? and he would call this uh, then Kavat. Yeah? And that's the necktie we know today. That's the necktie we know today, yeah. So it's an homage to Croatia. Exactly. Rather than just using uh, colors and, uh, and the squares that we know from everywhere else, we, we decided to do it a little bit uh, more uh, elegant. And to make it not just for Croatian customers, but also worldwide, we have many country flags that can be configured uh, in the colors here on the, on the necktie, connecting the creation origin of the car with the customers that will be worldwide. Exactly. Yeah, it also has integrated lights that show the charging status or the driving mode you're currently in, especially when you come to a track, then this can be activated. And also, yeah, guides the air into where it's uh, the most critical for the rear powertrain. So all the air that gets fed in here goes out through through a big channel here and is extracted here. And just like we have on the front, the spoiler also dictates how much air you extract here. So when the spoiler is down, 
the airflow here is restricted, but when the spoiler is up and even tilted, it generates even more under pressure here, so it pulls even more air out. So also this is a really uh, cool combination of two functions to improve the efficiency and the aerodynamics. So we have a very usable trunk for that kind yes. of car. And I think- 100 liters. 100 liters, which is pretty, pretty good. And we have uh, something that dictated the design a lot, which is the door, uh, because we wanted to have a very easy uh, egress and ingress uh, to and out of the car, uh, to have it uh, also for, for bigger people, very easy to get in and out, and then have a very comfortable seating. One key ingredient for a successful hypercar is, of course, the ingress-egress. You see other cars where people rather look foolish, so we wanted to avoid that. So when you open the door, you know, not only you lift up the, the sill with it so you can step in, but also you have lots of space around the head so you can get in and out really, really elegantly. You know? And I would say like this is, this is one of the biggest doors. And also when it opens, it transforms the car. You know, the cars all of a sudden it takes a completely different shape. So we have quite a lot of space, very generous, even for somebody who's taller. Can you just explain some key features, Adriano? We have such a unique powertrain and also unique opportunities to configure it in a, in a completely new way, like no car before. Uh, we, the idea was that we put everything that is uh, important for driving in the, in the primary zone, which is, which is at the same height as the steering wheel. And we uh, generated the idea of the knobs. And you have here knobs where you calibrate the powertrain not just that you switch between the modes, but you can also individually change all your setups between the modes and customize it to your liking. We, we didn't want to have everything on the touchscreen like many are doing now. The touchscreen for us is quite secondary. The primary functions, as you said, Adriano, here like pure mechanical knobs and, and switches to control the most important things and to have a physical interaction with the car and to feel like you are really changing something because changing the modes here or changing the torque distribution front to rear and these kind of things, you really change the character of the car. What we also have here is two cameras. One watching the driver, which can be used to authenticate uh, the driver and uh, enable the driver to, to drive. The other one is the action camera, which watches what the driver does and watches outside so we don't want our customers to go on a track and have to think about GoPros and charging them and where to put them and so on. The car comes already with it, along with all the telemetry data, all of the important information that we get from all the vehicle systems. You can record what you are doing and very quickly use the video to upload it to your social media or whatever you want. So we wanted to make very integrated and seamless and very easy to use for, for the modern generation, which also wants uh, to post about things they use, uh, they do with the car. And uh, not only practical things, but also luxurious and really precious materials uh, we put where, where they matter. So we have um, leather, carbon, alcantara, uh, aluminum parts. So I think, Adriano, we achieved what we wanted, which is a hypercar for the road, which has really high performance, but also is a pleasure to drive and use on the road. Yes, including good visibility, high-tech materials, and a really comfortable seating position. I personally can't wait to see how the customers will configure their cars and then seeing the cars rolling off from here and going from Croatia to around the world to all of our customers everywhere. Thank you a lot, Adriano, for joining today and for doing this amazing work on the car, on our Nevera. We talked about the engineering, the production, the design. Now it's time to talk about performance. So thanks, Adriano. Enjoy the ride. What are you guys doing here? I thought I was bringing the car. We have two Neveras, an empty airfield, lots of tires. But before we go have some fun, let's talk a little bit about the development of the car. So we wanted to achieve a car that's really fun to drive, intuitive, adjustable, 
that can do many things and not just be a one-trick pony on the drag strip, but also drift and all these other things. And maybe uh, before we continue, Mirgo, if you can tell us something about the performance of the car. Yeah, so 1,914 horsepower, that was a tick, so we achieved that. We also said that the car is going to go really fast on a quarter mile, so we said 9.1 seconds and the time is now 8.6, which makes it the fastest accelerating car, production car in the world. So, Matija, how did we do that? How was the development process going? Well, we developed the car in three stages, so we had three different stages of prototype development. Uh, in total, we built uh, 18 objects or 18 cars, prototypes that we tested all, all around the world, including crash tests, different testing on tracks like Nardo, and uh, wind tunnels and all the, other, all, the, all the other tests that we have to do. Okay, now I'm really curious to see how this car drives on the airfield. So let's go, Margot. Sitting here, one thing gets really obvious, and that's how many boxes we wanted to tick with the car. And like, uh, not focus on just one thing where the car will be great, like, I don't know, a track car or be great at quarter miles or be great at traveling or whatever. We wanted many of those things to work with this car. Yeah, we invested a lot of time to get the, the, the things just right. So, um, yes, the features had to be uh, done. So the, the, the drag strip, uh, the, the drift mode, all these things, but the car has to perform really, really well on the B road. So it has to have the feedback for the driver through the steering, through the pedals, through the, the lateral acceleration of the car. You have to be able with the torque vectoring to pinpoint the car where you want to, to, to go. So the car listens to the steering wheel because you are the master of the car. You're driving the car. It has to be intuitive. And at the same time, we managed to get a really nimble car that's really performant on the, on the, on the corners. And it's uh, on the on the highway on the maximum speed. It's quite stable. The car has lots of technology, but it's in the background, and the driver still feels in control. We are both drivers and car guys, and this is a car made by car guys for car guys, where we want the people to have still um, the feeling that um, and to be in control in reality, but also to have the feeling like they are really in control, and it's not just computers doing all the work. Yeah. And I think that has been really key. And with all the complex systems behind, with four motors, with the electro-hydraulic brake system, with the electric power steering, uh, brake by wire and all of this stuff, to still make it very engaging. And I think we did that. Yeah, if you feel torque vectoring working, we didn't do a good job. It has to be natural. Everything has to be natural. That's the hardest thing to get right. Yes. So, shall we do it? Yeah. And it's super easy, as you said. Okay. Holding the brake. Full throttle. Head on the seat. Yeah. Release. Oh. Oh. This never gets boring. Now the fun part. Oh yeah. <laughs> this was quite something. Yeah. But I think we won't spoil it too much. We want others to experience the car, to feel this. And rather than talking about it, we'll have many other people now having the opportunity to try the car, customers and media. At the same time, we will work to finalize the final details and still do the improvements and start shipping cars to customers very soon. Now let's go home. Nevera is coming.